9:24. It is time for deep thoughts. You know, my favorite type of deep thought segments to do uh, comes from when we have viewer questions that I can answer, and that's what we're going to do here today. So this comes from Diane. Why is thunder sometimes one loud clap, and other times it's a long-lasting? low rumble. Great observation. Yeah, it, it is strange, isn't it? That sometimes when thunder occurs, it's very loud. It all goes suddenly. And then sometimes you hear it rumble for seconds on end. Well, let's start this discussion by talking about what thunder is. It's really just the sound lightning makes. Lightning is, of course, very, very hot. Over 50,000 degrees, hotter than the surface of the sun. And that heats the air that the lightning bolt is in contact with. When it heats, the air rapidly expands, and the sound you hear, thunder, is that air rapidly expanding. Now, there's a big difference in how fast light travels and how fast sound travels through air from that lightning bolt to you. The speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. The speed of sound, only a fraction of that, 0.213 miles per second, so about a quarter mile per second. Still fast, but nowhere near as fast as the speed of light. In fact, light travels one million times faster than the speed of sound, meaning no matter where that lightning strike is, you're going to see it almost instantly. But oftentimes it takes the thunder a lot longer to get to you, for you to hear it. So let's take a look at two different scenarios. The first would be a very nearby lightning strike. You're in your home and lightning strikes less than a mile away. Again, sound travels at about a quarter mile per second. So you're going to hear that instantly. If it's a close lightning strike, you're going to get that sudden, loud, single burst of thunder. However, if the lightning strike is further away, say in this scenario, about 10 miles away from your house, well, now it's going to take longer for the thunder to reach you. So you're going to see the lightning strike first. It's going to take a couple seconds for the thunder to arrive. But also note that lightning bolt oftentimes stretches up through the sky, back into the cloud. It takes a long time to reach the ground. So there's a lot of that sound that is trying to reach you. And you hear it rumbling then in that sort of low, long-lasting rumble. And there's another factor at play here, too, something called an inversion. Think of this scenario where you've already had a storm in your area and it's been raining for now 20, 30 minutes, but the storm is starting to wind down. All that rain has cooled things down in the lower levels of the atmosphere, and likely an inversion has set up. Cooler at the ground, warmer as you go up. That's a stable atmosphere. A far off thunderstorm now produces lightning and thunder, and that sound is going to bounce around in that inversion layer, something called atmospheric sound ducting. It's actually the same process in which during the evening you can tune your radio and get stations from miles and miles and miles away. That sound is bouncing around, and with that, again, you hear that low, sort of continuous uh, rumble rather than that sudden burst of thunder. And hey, thunder is a great tool you can use to know when you got to seek out shelter because the simple rule is when you can hear thunder, you're close enough to be struck by lightning. You know how the saying goes, when thunder roars, go indoors. Something you all have to keep in mind here during rainy season in southwest Florida when we see thunderstorms just about each and every day. That's it for Deep Thoughts here for today. If you have questions for me for future segments, all you got to do, reach out. Send me an email, jim.dickey at abc-7.com. You can always reach out on Facebook as well.